believe in yourself. But understand the equation. And first, you got to be yourself. And how can you be yourself if you don't even believe in yourself? Because believing is your reality. So believing is self. Just got to have faith in yourself, in my opinion. So after I tell you all that, boom, we on episode 12, story time with Q. Well, I tell y'all I almost got my nephew killed trying to get some yummy yummy. <laughs> I was trying to get some yummy yummy. Yum. I was trying to get some, boy. Woo, watch your kids. Kids be out here living a whole life. Y'all don't even know about. But yeah, I think I wrapped that up just to mess with my nephew. And, you know, until y'all, like, you know, I done been through some stuff, y'all. And, hey, that's only the, that's the first story time with you. Then the next episode comes Sympathy for the Devil. I felt like in Sympathy for the Devil, I said a lot. That's what really triggered the last episode coming up, which is this one. Well, no, next episode will be last one. But breaking everything down to the end of what I'm trying to tell you guys. Because in Sympathy for the Devil, I talk about everything I believe in. And I broke it down by showing you and giving you the doctrine. And, oh, I love sympathy for the devil. And it was all triggered by my guy Jay asking me a question. And that shit was cold. So episode 14, episode 14 wasn't episode 14, like, for that reason. Like, it needed to be 14. But it it hit on the number, which is, you know, the number of completion they tell you guys is seven. And I told you I'm stuck on the Holy Trinity, but the number of completion, the reflection of that is 14. So this is about the reflection and it's in the concept that I name love or convenience. So in this episode, I'm breaking down my perspective on love, which I think I made it funny too. I love love or convenience. I love it. I debut my, my poem, which is called love or convenience. I hope I did a good job. I should start doing my poems when I know them more instead of getting excited and just reading them live. <laughs> but love or convenience, oh, I love that because love is everything to me, guys. And me, I look at it like I need my reflection to be, you know, the best version of me. So I'm team love. I said I'm going to do an episode where I'm going to speak from the convenience perspective more from it because I'm team love, but I can just you know, just to show how I look at things and how I can break these ideals down and I can break all my ideals down from the reflection of itself. So instead of going how I spoke, you know, primarily about love, I can speak positively about the conveniences of it also and make it an episode and call that shit convenience or love. But we'll see. That'll be season two if I do do it. Uh, 15 was just that was actually one episode. I split it in half. I was a little lazy. I was down one episode. You feel me? So I was technically that that episode that became man or male and story time with Q chapter two. I actually split that in half. So I actually cheated y'all out of an episode. But hence, you see, episode 20. Well, it was not episode 20. It's just called bonus episode, which is my anger was managed. That was me giving y'all that episode back. And I gave it, in my opinion, in a fun way. So, yeah, that was me giving y'all that back. But episode 15 is man or male. You know, man is managing anything necessary. A male is manipulating anyone listening every day. So I just talked about a little thing I saw on social media and, you know, just wrap that up to show how I'm not team male. I'm, it's ridiculous how many males motherfuckers let lead them. And then next episode, I go into story town with Q chapter two. That's the one where I, um, I stopped the story where I talk about. The school I went to, I don't know if I told you guys the name. I don't think I did, um, but fuck it. It's called Copernicus in Chicago. So I was going to that school and the little, I talked about this day where I had like, I think five fights. I think it was five fights. I think I had five fights walking in one direction, going to school and break down. It was a little sad, but it was, you know, little stuff. It wasn't really sad in my opinion. I already went through it. So I don't, it don't make me cry. No shit like that. It's just something that happened and I look at it like, oh, then, you know, that shit actually happened. But it was a lot going on. And I felt like people get to know me a little bit more and hear some of my crazy stories because I know a lot of people be like, you keep saying you crazy. I'm like, y'all have no idea. I could do season two all stories and still get y'all 21 episodes like for real because <laughs> uh, I got a lot of stuff to happen. But just another situation. And then I remember that school in itself, like the walk to this school was already nuts. 
And then inside the school, it's nuts. Like if you're paying attention to the story, you see that I'm having all these fights just on a walk to school. Then when I get to school, I got to fight in school and after school, then got to walk back from school. Like it was it was a different experience. And I was just like, man, there's so much stuff happened in that short time frame in fifth grade. Like all this stuff happened. I was in fifth grade and it's a bunch of stuff. So in the midst of me telling a story, other stories was coming up. The Mr. Lewis thing, I talked about that. It was just a lot, but I stopped at, no, I didn't tell the Mr. Lewis thing on that one, I don't think. Um, but I know in chapter two, you know, it's all the fights. And then I stop after I get kicked out of Miss Tom, that bitch, that bitch, Miss Thompson. After I got kicked out of that bitch class. Fuck her. Oh, I don't like, I don't like teachers like that. You're molding or help molding the conscience of the youth. Why would you come in there and try to teach kids with this type of attitude? That shit is horrible to me. I think that's a horrible adult to even come at kids with that type of attitude that children were learning. Oh, I hated that bitch. Oh, and I don't hate a lot, but I hate that bitch. Her existence is ridiculous to me. But anyway, so I got kicked out of that bitch, Miss Thompson class. And, you know, I went through a few other classes and shit like that. I kind of touch on. I think I did. Um, y'all got to understand, I do the episodes and people ask me about certain stories and I tell them, you know, it's way more to the story than I'm telling you guys. I break the shit down. I think in like key points, but it'd be a lot of shit be going that went on in my life. And shit was a, a real adventure. If I can show y'all the video, like if I can show y'all the video while I'm explaining this shit, this would be one of the greatest shows ever made. Like if you can watch this shit, like. You know, imagine like my life was video camera, like you watch in 4K, you watch a show or some shit. And when I'm telling y'all these stories, imagine if y'all can see the shit as I'm explaining and breaking that shit down. That should be fucking nuts. Oh, because that shit was crazy because because I'm an adult. I'm 30 some. So I would look at this child. Imagine looking at this 10 year old child like, why the fuck is your life like this? <laughs> That shit would be crazy saying like why what the fuck is going on with these children? <laughs> these children is uh but it's come from the false god society and people have mindsets. People have agendas and perspectives and belief and they act off of them and they get tough for people because it's tough trying to fight that when it's a perceived power because you lose power just because you choose life. Think of that concept you lose power if you ever choose life because someone's going to put you in a situation or or you're going to be in a situation where the choices that you have to choose from, the choice you have to decide is life or death. And choosing life may give away power because a motherfucker may tell you, hey, I'm going to take your family member. I have guns and weapons and it's a lot of us. Either you sit there and let me go take your family member and hang them while we fucking eat food or rape them or beat them. And if you do something, I will kill you. So to choose life, you would have to give up the power of letting them do that to a loved one of yours. Because you chose life. And that's where it gets thick. It gets tricky. You always have the choice. But that choice is, is a tough one. To decide is tough in every concept. That's why I tell you guys, I'm not telling you this is easy. I said it's going to take work. But it's all predicated on what you believe in. And me, I just happen to be a type of person that I believe in the concept. And I, and I actually have this in a song. I said the life you grip into living is a mild war. You wasting your existence if you living with nothing to die for. So for me and his love, I believe in, it's no way I can tell you I love you. I give you all of that. I give you love. My love is ridiculous. I give you all of that. How the fuck can I say that's what I give you and allow someone to come in here and take you with nothing but the threat of me dying to stop them from taking you? Because I'm going to fight to live for you. It's no way I can be alive and they took you. I can't be alive and they took you from me. If I'm alive and they took you from me, 
until I die, my goal is for them to die. I better be dead if you take something I love. Take someone I love, I better be dead. Hurt someone I love, I better be dead. Not hurt, dead. Because I'm coming at you with non-stop ferocity. Because death is not a greater threat than love to me. Love is everything. Death is inevitable. 